I welcome you in 18th lecture relating to transfer of technology through strategic alliance and joint venture. And I am in the module of special purpose vehicle. And this talk will be more concentrated around disclosure to be made by SPV. Now, I believe you remember whenever we are talking about the SPV, this is a business form which is uh, incorporated or uh, developed out of the joint venture or strategic alliance. And I told you in my previous lecture that uh, when I am talking about the SPV, I am basically indicating companies. So, either this is a private limited companies or a public limited company or it can be a public listed company. Now, in case of the SPV, as this is became a separate organization than that of his promoter or the joint venture partner or strategic alliance partner, you this particular new organization need to make a disclosure continuously to the regulator, because this is a separate entity in the eye of law. Even though there is a substantial investment made by the joint venture partner or the strategic alliance partner in this particular uh, SPV or uh, this uh, you know business form. Now, uh, there is a several regulator to whom you need to uh, 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 submit the different document or you need to make a disclosure in different time as, as per the requirement. Sometimes you will find it is prescribed by the statute itself or sometimes you will find the uh, regulator come up with the regulation or the rules time to time or even sometimes they uh, issue the guideline or even they can also uh, you know issue the press note. So, whatever it is you need to respond to those particular notification and you need to give the information on the regular basis uh, to this particular regulator. Now, in generally you might need to give a copy to the trust it, trust it in the sense if uh, you know any trust has been created out of this particular SPV or SPV has been formed as a trust or if the SPV has been formed uh, uh, by the joint venture agreement or strategic alliance agreement and then it has been incorporated as a, a company, then in that case the formation document or memorandum or article of the association you might require to give to the regulator. Now, when I am talking about the regulator, you should remember that it is a number of uh, you know people who might be involved into this particular regulated thing. Like you know if it, if it is a foreign investment, then in that case the RBI might come into the picture or maybe FIPB, uh, a foreign uh, uh, industrial promotion board will come into the picture or if uh, this particular you know formation is like a public uh, listed company, then in that case the SEBI will come into the picture or if it is a simply a private or a public limited company, then in that case the ministry of corporate affairs will come into the picture. Apart from that there might be sectoral regulator who might be the uh, regulator in a particular sector and they require a certain document. It might be the state government where you are operating or might be the local government, they might prescribe some of the document to be given. So, what I did in this particular case, I generally created a generic list which you might require to give, but this is not the exhaustive list or this is not the uh, uh, you know end list or the final list into this thing, but it is just a indicative list. Secondly, you need to give a financial account and statement of affair. Sometimes you know you need to give even the solvency statement that how far this particular joint venture is doing well. Please do remember which I am going to discuss uh, with you little later. Now the government is uh, insisting for you know uh, more and more offset. That means where the government is targeting a particular market to be developed, and therein the technology should be transferred into into those particular domain where the government wanted to develop that particular market. And many of the time it so happen that not only the private players are coming as a 
joint venture partner even the government also making an investment into that particular partner. In generally this is popularly known as PPP model partnership private public partnership. So, uh, uh, you know in those particular circumstances even the government might look for this particular uh, you know information not as a regulator, but as a partner into the entire uh, scenario. So, whatever it may I mean or, or the government even may ask for the solvency statement, because government might be worried about the health of this particular joint venture, because government want to act as a sponsor and they want to address a particular issue through this particular joint venture. Now, uh, you, you need to give uh, information relating to the constitution ownership, capital size and size of the issue. Now, constitution I have told is generally the formation document or memorandum or article of the association. Then ownership structure is who is holding what uh, percentage of the equity into this particular joint venture. That means, if there is a number of joint venture partners are there, they might not bring the capital in a equal uh, percentage. There might be a variation and uh, what kind of a variation that it is you need to you know disclose many of the time. Even sometimes you need to make this particular disclosure to the capital market regulator if that particular company is a public listed company. Now, you need to talk about uh, capital structure also that means you know what percentage of the capital is come from equity and what kind what class of equity you are basically issued or what, wha what percentage of the capital come from a preference shares and what class of preference shares you have issued. If you have raised the money uh, through the uh, debenture, then in that case what kind of a debenture you have issued and to whom you have issued, do the financial institutions has made an investment into your company. Then furthermore, I the you, might to, uh, you might need to disclose about uh, you know I I if it is a convertible debenture, then in that case what is the structure of the convertible debenture and which within which state it need to be redeemed. Then you, you, might you might require to spell out if you are taking the deposit and furthermore the interesting part of it that what is the arrangement relating to holding of this particular capital. That means, it might so happen which I have discussed with you previously that there is a sum of uh, some partner of this particular joint venture might like to dilute the stake and if that particular arrangement is there then what is the time period and timeline with which uh, they need to do that. Now, terms of offering including the interest of the payment uh, yield, uh, yield on the instrument. So, uh, if you are uh, having a uh, you know different kind of instrument, then in that case you might need to talk about the terms of offering. Now, please remember many of the time in case of the joint venture, every everybody do not bring the cash, but they get the equity allotment because they bring some kind which is uh, relevant to the business. Now, let me explain to you like you know your partner might bring a technology. So, as because he is bringing the technology he might not be interested to invest any single money into that particular joint venture, but in that case you need to allot the equity or different kind of uh, you know securities whatever you have agreed upon in the joint venture to that particular person who has brought the technology. There might be a person who might uh, you know give the land to this particular joint venture company and in that circumstances you might need to give a kind of instrument or allot the instrument which you have uh, you know agreed upon. Then in that case you need to talk about the interest payment on those uh, particular instru instrument or if you are want to make a dividend or you, you, you want to you know uh, issue the further uh, fully paid capital to these particular uh, you know uh, partners then then what is the arrangement and what terms you are going to do you need to spell it out. You need to talk about uh, uh, underlying asset pool and its performance history. Uh, that means you know uh, mainly in the, this is in those particular case which are very technology in, in, intensive and in that uh, circumstances you need to say that what kind of asset which you have created over these. Uh, you know years when the joint venture is in operation and at the same time you might need to talk about the performance history. That means, you know how much you have created an impact in the market or what is the market capitalization of uh, you know this particular joint venture. Is this market capitalization is somewhere 
better than even is uh, promoter or the joint venture partners or you know the sponsor. So, all this particular thing you need to make a uh, you know uh, uh, declaration. Now, please remember sometime even the regulator said that you need to go through the credit assessment. So, in that particular circumstances, a, you need to go to the credit rating agencies who are going to assess based on the information which you disclose and then you possibly allowed to go for raising the further capital either from financial institution or from the public uh, you know whatever uh, whatever the means you, you deploy. Now, you need to give sometimes the uh, information about the originator or uh, uh, joint venture uh, or you know strategic alliance partner and what are the transaction structure between them. Now, this particular information is quite relevant for the uh, fair market regulator like you know if it is a competition commission who, uh, 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 who is coming into the picture because your joint venture is so much so that it might create a market concentration or it might even uh, uh, create kind of uh, imbalance into that particular existing market. So, in that circumstances you need to give this uh, information uh, relating to the transaction structure because you know because of this particular joint venture there is a new market structure has been developed into, into that particular market. And furthermore you need to talk about the service arrangement, credit enhancement uh, detail and the risk factor etcetera because um, you know if it is if you are looking for uh, a public uh, you know invitation then in that case possibly you need to tell the people that what kind of a risk which is involved into this particular business at the same time you have to talk about if there is a any service arrangement which you are sharing with uh, some other agencies uh, 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 it might be relating to the marketing it might be relating to the supply chain it might be relating to uh, you know the repair and the service whatever it may I mean whatever the agreement which you are doing because these are all relevant from the uh, perspective of uh, the uh, competition law or the you know the sectoral regulator because you know they should know what is the market composition where you are operating. So, these are the important information which you need to disclose periodically to the respective regulator. Now, let me take you to the next stage of disclosure to the investors and therein you need to talk about the uh, investment which is not uh, uh, you know insured or which is not under the liability. Because you know if you are uh, making an investment and what kind of liability it is getting uh, on that particular investment it should be you know made it clear to the investors and whatever the investor uh, investment they are making is there any insurance of that particular investors or that it is a naked risk uh, or naked market risk which you need to embrace uh, through this particular investment that also you need to you know spell it out very clearly. Now, uh, if there is a trustee or originator or SPP uh, do not guarantee the capital value or the security or performance of the securities uh, you know or, or collectively uh, receivable spool. I mean, you know, you, you need to make it clear that you know none of them, like you know, the either SPV or those people who are the partner into that particular SPV or the joint venture partner or the sponsor in that particular joint venture, none of them might give any assurance of the performance of your investment. Uh, you know, it is it is not that you know whatever investment you have made, you are going to get a return which has been projected to you. So, in those particular circumstances it need to be very clearly spelled out or you need to give this particular information to your investor. Next is investment can be a subject to the investment risks including the prepayment risks, interest rate risks, credit risks and possible delay in repayment or the loss of the income and the principal invested. So, it might be subjected to the different risks like uh, you know as I have talked about like you know it can be a prepayment risk like you know it might so happen that you know you, you could not continue this joint, joint venture for a long period of time or there is a change in the uh, regulation and therein one partner need to dilute their stake because government has decided that in that particular sector the foreign investment will be diluted 
and in that case the foreign partner need to take a prepayment and when you are taking a prepayment it might so happen that you might not recover the entire uh, returns on the investment which you have initially projected or there might be issues relating to the credit risks or interest rates that means you know you thought that well this particular uh, company is going to do uh, in a in a nice manner or they are going to operate in that particular environment in, in, in positively, but ultimately you find the joint venture did not work properly. In those particular circumstances, whoever has been invested either as a creditor or uh, you know as a depositor, they are basically need to accept the low return uh, if it is not been guaranteed while they have made this particular investment. So, whatever it may, it is uh, important that you need to make this particular disclosure as a SPV to all your uh, investors or the cluster of investors, uh, you know, and you should, uh, you should develop a mechanism of informing this uh, particular uh, disclosure. Now, the next important issue which is uh, you should keep in the mind is a continuous disclosure. Now, law in, uh, in our country is mandating for, for continuous disclosure for some of the type of business form. Like if you are uh, incorporating your venture as a public uh, listed company or a public limited company, then in that case you need to go for a continuous disclosure. Even some of the sectoral regulator prescribe that there should be a continuous disclosure by uh, uh, the venture, uh, uh, you know, uh, joint venture uh, companies, or maybe uh, you know uh, this, uh, 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 you know, uh, the organization which has uh, incorporated out of the joint venture. Now, please do remember when we are talking about the disclosure, as we have said that disclosure which you need to make to the regulator uh, and as well as the investor, you might need to make the disclosure to the wider people in addition to these two uh, group of people. Like you might uh, may, uh, require to make the disclosure to la uh, larger stakeholders. And in those particular circumstances, please remember uh, this disclosure can be categorized into three broad category. One is a financial uh, disclosure, uh, second is a non-financial disclosure and third is a risk disclosure. And whatever it may and whatever the, whatever the you know regulation you are subjected to, you need to make this particular disclosure accordingly. And in, in some cases, you need to make this particular disclosure in every six months. And you know, they also sometimes prescribe the channel by which you can make this disclosure, like you know, you have to send it by the register post or email or courier or fax or pre, uh, in the periodical intervals. Or I, it might suggest you that you need to post this particular disclosure in your website and you need to keep that particular website updated every time whenever there is a certain change into that particular organization itself. Now, next is the periodical report. Periodical report is uh, uh, should be published by the uh, you know SPV and this is basically goes to the sponsor or the joint venture partner or SA partner or whoever is promoted this particular SPV. Now, whenever the SPV is gone for a residual restructuring or renegotiating the terms of an agreement or the contract, and that has uh, an effect on the transfer of the asset to the SPV, and that is need to be disclosed to its sponsor. Like you know, many of the time you need to go for renegotiating the terms of the credit which you have received from the public financial institution because whatever your projection was you did not able to meet that particular projection for some of the external reason or external barrier or maybe the regulatory barrier. So, in that case you need to go for renegotiation or maybe you might uh, go for reframing the uh, entire agreement because uh, you know uh, the, the person who has entered into agreement who has seeking the service from you or purchasing the product from you, they found that the agreement which they have entered upon are not uh, relevant in the change circumstances. In that circumstances also you need to renegotiate that and whatever you are renegotiating in the terms and condition in the business, you need to report back to your uh, 
sponsor or the promoter or the joint venture partner who has uh, done that. Now, uh, there is another important issue which possibly I am going to talk little detail in my subsequent lecture is relating to the project rigs. Now, project rigs is uh, inevitable for any kind of uh, you know joint venture who or, or uh, any kind of a SPV which has been which is uh, incorporated out of this particular joint venture. And uh, this uh, SPV might fail to manage the project because because of the, uh, within the timeline or the uh, cost successfully because of the several reason it might be internal operational problem or it might be totally external to the uh, uh, you know uh, that particular SPV or it might be cost, cost overrun that means a particular estimation has been done and now it is more than whatever has been you know estimated and it might be because of the external environment or maybe internal process delay like external environment might be you know there is a fluctuation in the currency because whatever this particular transaction was happening you need to depend on the foreign currency or the importing of some of the you know uh, manufacturing item and you know whatever it has been estimated you find that the because of this uh, fluctuation in the currency currency has gone up pri uh, you know exchange price has gone up and because of that cost of that particular import is uh, gone up or maybe there is a change in the import duty and because of that you have uh, you have a change into this particular thing or you know because of the internal permission or maybe the agreement relating to restarting a particular uh, project or rescheduling the project or commissioning the project the joint venture partner could not uh, agreed upon the terms uh, on which this particular project will be uh, you know started and because of that uh, you know the cost overrun has happened so whatever it may you need to again report it back and there might be delay for uh, delay or there might be other un 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 unforeseen element which might impact the viability of the project or profitability of the project and whatever it may you need to you know report it back please do remember many of the time even the lenders uh, come into the picture because lender gives you a lending or they have lent the money or the creditor lend the money because they have uh, you know basically uh, gone uh, you know lended the money based on your project report and the projection which you have made in your project report and they might come and they might start enforcing the you know agreement for making the uh, you know payment in time or they might even take you to the court for uh, you know enforcement of this particular agreement. So, in those particular circumstances you need to be uh, careful and you need to even you know uh, try to find out that how you know this uh, thing can be guarded or how the executive court required to defend against this particular allegation or uh, you know uh, 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 ne negligent or the breach of contract whatever has been allegation has been made to uh, to that particular company. And please do remember these are the very serious problem and many of the time your SPV might fail because of this particular risk which is basically you know uh, you have not taken care of or you have not thought of while you have either uh, uh, develop your joint venture agreement or when you have framed your SPV. So, it is always uh, uh, always always advisable to you that you should give uh, adequate attention to this and whatever these uh, issues are you need to keep on uh, you know reporting back to those people who are basically related or relevant to this particular SPV that means the sponsor or maybe the lender or maybe government agency who might have an interest over this particular joint venture so much so forth. So that you know uh, if there is a any difficult scenario arises then everybody lend their hand to get out of this particular uh, you know difficult situation instead of creating further problem to this particular SPV. Now lastly there might be issue relating to the environmental liability and this is becoming more and more on different uh, uh, you know uh, state different uh, industry who, who creates an impact over the environment. And uh, in our country the environmental regulator is become very stringent nowadays and they have basically come out with the different environmental norms and you need to you know comply with that. 
many of the time you will find this particular environmental norm are so stringent that uh, you might feel that these are not business friendly. Nevertheless, whatever the scenario is, you need to manage this particular risks and you need to take uh, adequate protection if necessary. Sometimes even you need to take the underwriting protection relating to this particular issue and whatever the decision you take, you need to continuously inform this particular issues to the stakeholder or larger stakeholder of this particular joint venture. Thank you.